Welcome to The Connected Business. Th this month we're looking at finance and IT and I'm very lucky to be here today with Dushant Sharavat, uh, who is of Tower Group. Now Tower Group are specialists in the IT and trading area, aren't they? That's right, Paul. So Tower Group is a research and advisory company and we write research on the financial industry and my focus is uh, the capital markets space. Right, so I mean we're obviously in a very turbulent period, a period of great change. What do you see the future of trading to be? What are the big trends there? So if you talk about like electronic trading for example, you know, which has been a big trend for the last 10 years, dramatic changes have been happening in electronic trading space and it continues to change pretty dramatically. Today's electronic trading environment is a really complex and sophisticated mix of you know, access to multiple liquidity pools, trading infrastructure, the tremendous amount of connectivity that you require, both internally within your firm and out to all these execution venues, post-trade environment, you know, systems. So a tremendous amount of change happening in electronic trading. At the same time, for watchers of what's happening in the trading space, I think it's fascinating to not keep your, take your eye off on what's happening still on the trading desk in terms of humans still involved in trading activity voice based communication so for all the advancement in automated electronic trading voice based trading and human based trading is still a very critical element of, of trading it's still it's, at the core if you like if, yeah. i would say it's at the core yeah. and it's particularly important i think in periods of market distress as we saw in 2008 in fact just about a month ago with all the problems in europe we saw human based activity again sort of step up so even though we move into this environment of heavy technology automation it's still very critical element of the trading environment today is the right mix of automation and computers and automated trading, electronic trading, but also human beings actually sitting at traders executing decisions. So, I mean, if we look at a trader's desk today, and some of our audience won't be familiar with a trader's desk, what would we see there? What are the tools that they're using? It's a it's really complicated mix. The first thing you see, obviously, is you know, eight to ten different screens. Really? And what you're essentially seeing on the screens are, uh, depending on what kind of, uh, you know, stocks or bonds they're trading or what particular regions they're trading, uh, most of the screens are basically a mix of market data, so in terms of real life feeds of what's happening in the market. You've got a plethora of software, order management systems to manage orders for you, and then all the connectivity out into the market. So looking at what's happening in the York Stock Exchange, all the different execution venues, all of that is what you see on the trader desktop. What you don't see, equally important, is the massive amount of connectivity that is required to facilitate those 810 screens that you see. So for every dollar spent on what you see in terms of software and hardware in front of the trader, there's probably three times as much that's behind the scenes that you don't sort of realize. Right. And who are the vendors of this equipment, this equipment and this connectivity? Who, Great who's question. making money out of been, this? Well, who's making money might be different <laughs> who the vendors are, right? right. Uh, but it's it's entire ecosystem of vendors that are hardware providers, software providers, connectivity providers. So you've got firms that are software providers, for example, SunGuard, Advent Software, Thomson Reuters. You've got connectivity providers that are the traditional telecom providers like BT, but also major providers on the trading space like turret providers like IPC. What's a turret? Turret essentially, think of that as a sophisticated phone that is sitting okay. on the desk that helps a trader you know, trade with other traders. Very simplistic idea, but obviously phones like IPC have gone way beyond just offering that, that piece of telephone equipment. Mm. And there's a lot of intelligence built into that equipment that helps you kind of trade effectively. Right. Um, so those are sort of the ones that are most obvious, but they are a single trader uh, trading stocks, even US stocks, might be utilizing software, hardware, and services provided by about 15 to 20 different providers. So pretty complicated right. and big you know, expanse of vendors that sort of service and, and provide uh, technology for that, uh, for that activity. And who's managing that, that plethora of, of technology? So today, uh, it's a mix of firms themselves managing internally, mm -hmm. but increasingly, uh, the same providers of technology, firms like IPC that we've talked about as an example, they're also providing managed services. In other words, saying, you know what, Morgan Stanley, you don't have to do the management of this trading turret. We'll actually offer that out to you on an outsource basis. Okay. So there's a mix of firms doing it themselves, right. but also traditional providers of technology now saying we can offer managed services and do it on your behalf for you. Where do you see uh, the trading desk going in terms of technology over, say, the next three years? Over the next three years, um, you know, clearly 
the advancement towards you know high octane trading or high performance trading, mm -hmm. which is a fancy term that describes high amount of computing power, right? Um, extreme amounts of connectivity, so you're connecting not just to 20 venues but a hundred different venues, and very fast, and I very fast, what's yeah. called low latency. Right. So if you mix the speed, great amount of computing power widespread connectivity, mm -hmm. that's an environment that is being described today as high performance trading. Or high octane. High octane trading, right, right. or what you hear about high frequency trading for right. us. So investments in that area are probably going to continue in the next three years, obviously subject to market conditions. Mm -hmm. So if you see the softening the market that we've seen last couple of months, if that continues on, then some of the investments might be put on hold. But overall investment in improving trading infrastructure continues, and both on the investment management side and on the brokerage side. Third part is actually a lot of investment still taking place on the exchange side. So the exchanges are sp spending a lot of money improving their infrastructure and competing not just with each other, but increasingly with broker dealers, for example, the derivative space. So overall, our, our thesis for you know, our, our forecast for expenditure in this space is fairly robust compared to other areas which are seeing a lot of cutback in, in expenditure. Obviously, again, great news for the vendors, but uh, I guess uh, in times of, of low volumes, it's difficult for, uh, for a, a firm to support that level of expenditure, is it? Absolutely, Paul. In fact, you know, the, the challenge for most trading floors is that you know, costs are lumpy, which means that yeah. you can add another server, right, right. Uh, if market conditions improve and you expect a great amount of volume. But if volumes become soft as they have over the last you know, 12 to 16 months compared to where they were in 2008 and 2009, you can't sort of get rid of that server as easily. So costs are lumpy, which means that you can take on you know, $50,000, $100,000 increments of expense. But when you cut back expenses, you can scale back you know, as easily. So costs are more you know, fixed, so to speak. Um, they are, we are trying to move to a variable model, and that's where things like cloud computing play a role but it becomes absolutely a big challenge for firms to manage their budget as economic conditions ebb and flow. Great, thank you very much, Dashant. Thanks, We're Bob. going to come back, and I invite the audience to come back uh, to the same location in a couple of days' time when we'll have part two of our series, which we're going to dig a little deeper into the buy side, so please return. <laughs>